Thank you, Diane. I'm, I do hope all of you will. Thank you, Diane and Dr. Sachs. Uh, Dr. Sachs, I, will, I have to, two comments on your remarks. Your clarity and way of explaining things that is so understandable without losing the subtlety of the point you're trying to make is impressive. And I thank you for all the work you do to explain neurology and your insights to the general community. It's really very valuable. And I also have to tell you that you make me look forward to my 80s. So. <laughs> Once again, D Diane, thank you so much for gracing us each year with your interviews. I especially want to say to you, Diane, that we are very sorry John is not here with us this evening. We appreciate his being a co-chair of this dinner with you, but I hope he knows that we are all here tonight to support him and the others with Parkinson's who can't be here with us tonight. So thank, thank you to John. And I want to thank all of you for joining us this evening. This event raises over 20% of PAN's annual budget, and without your support, we simply could not do all of the good work that we do. But the Udall Dinner, to me, is not just a fundraising event. It is an annual celebration of the uniqueness of PAN and the Parkinson's disease community. The fact that PAN represents the entire Parkinson's community, all the national organizations, researchers, and most importantly, people with Parkinson's and their families, on all governmental issues affecting this disease is what makes us strong and absolutely unique. No other disease community in Washington has been able to coordinate itself so that it truly speaks with one voice on policy issues. Yes. The many people in this room tonight who represent the national Parkinson's organizations that work with PAN deserve great thanks for their support. It is not always easy to maintain the unified voice, but each of you knows that, commu that our community is better served by us working together. And for that, I thank the national organizations that support PAN, the Michael J. Fox Foundation, the National Parkinson Foundation, the Parkinson's Disease Foundation, and the Parkinson's Alliance Unity Walk. Now, the elephant in the room tonight uh, is, of course, the overall fiscal crisis. The government shutdown, the looming debt ceiling, and the continued impact of sequestration. It makes me sad and very frustrated that our NIH colleagues could not be here tonight because the agency is heavily furloughed. And I know that we are all concerned about how these budget and sequester battles will impact biomedical research. But as many of you have heard me say before, periods of disruption and change are exactly when you need a strong policy voice the most. So many decisions are being made right now that will impact the Parkinson's disease community in terms of both research and access to care, and it is so important that PAN be there to steer decisions in the right direction. The PAN staff and our advocates are often asked, especially in these somewhat chaotic times, how one organization can make a difference in national policy. How can the voice of just one disease community impact issues as complicated and broad as national research policy and national policy on access to care? The answer to that question lies in the strength of our unified voice and the consistently strong advocacy by PAN's national grassroots leaders and our staff. Since 1997, going back a little bit, PAN has secured $350 million in Parkinson's disease research in a Department of Defense program separate from NIH that focuses on neurotoxin exposures in Parkinson's disease, very specifically, very important research. More recently, PAN adds, PAN's advocacy stopped the closure of the Veterans Affairs Parkinson's Research and Care Centers that continue to serve the 80,000 veterans with Parkinson's disease. To this day, PAN maintains a strong par partnership with the National Institutes of Health, the largest funder of Parkinson's disease research in the world, ensuring that not just enough dollars go to the Parkinson's research, but that it is spent well. 
It is through our advocacy, for example, that NIH recently launched a biomarker initiative specific to Parkinson's, and there are now nine research, promising research projects searching for a much needed progressive biomarker in Parkinson's disease. We're also in the process of working with NIH on planning research priorities for the NIH-funded Parkinson's research in the coming years. Through recent, recent class action litigation, PAN has ensured for the Parkinson's community that necessary therapy benefits will not be curtailed for people with Medicare simply because the person has a degenerative disease. Believe it or not, that had been an issue with a Medicare policy. And also within the Medicare program, we are actively advocating for legislation that would expand access to specialist care through the use of telemedicine or telehealth a very promising way to ensure that those in our community who don't always have access to the highest level of care can in fact receive that. And PAN is the only national organization working to ensure that the Parkinson's community takes full advantages of the opportunities provided by the Affordable Care Act by developing resources to educate our community about the law's impact on our health care needs. PAN is a driving force behind the Food and Drug Administration's revitalized patient engagement campaign, ensuring that the patient voice is part of the risk-benefit assessment at FDA. This is a hugely important focus for the Food and Drug Administration right now, and PAN is actively involved with it in ensuring that the FDA has the right information about the burden of this disease when it's assessing a potential therapy in terms of not just safety, but what will it do for the quality of life of people living with the disease. And for the many issues that go far beyond Parkinson's specific, PAN holds leadership positions in major healthcare policy organizations and, co and coalitions in D.C. and around the country, many of which are represented in this room tonight. But the, at the very heart of all of PAN's successes as the unified voice for the Parkinson's community are thousands of grassroots leaders, advocates, and change makers who know, who know what it means to live with Parkinson's. They are really the heart and soul of PAN. So I assure you that while the government may be causing us great concern about biomedical research and ask access to care right now, and today it certainly does, thanks to your support, PAN will insist that the needs of people with Parkinson's not be left behind. Before we turn to our entrees now, I want to thank the people and organizations that have made tonight possible. Please, I hope you will look at the full list of sponsors in your program book, but I would like to specifically thank our gold sponsors, Teva, CNS, and UCB, our benefactor, Abvi, and our patrons, Jody and George Allen, Frank and Marcia Carlucci, Ron and Linda Galwich, Pfizer, the Prescott Family Foundation, Bruce and Paula Robinson and Deborah Robinson, the Harold and Shirley Robinson Philanthropic Fund, and the Ian and Mimi Rowland Foundation. So thank you to all of those supporters. Also, I'd like to thank all steering and planning committee members who helped make this dinner possible. The steering and planning committees start their work shortly after the holiday season for the next dinner to make sure that this event is not only fun and the food tastes good, but that it's successful for PAN, and they really work throughout the year. So I'd like to ask all planning and steering committee members to stand, and if we can give them a round of applause. Thank you. 